Death Wave may be dominating the ladder right now in just pure popularity. This deck is going to be not far behind. This is an Arrow deck as well. Arrow being the best card in the game, but Shuri is a close second, if not the best card in the game. This deck runs both of those cards, so we're going to see some crazy power level out of this deck. Uh, this is Sauron plus Shuri, so let's get into the breakdown of this deck, and then we'll go into a couple games. Uh, make sure if you're not subscribed to this channel, feel free to do that, you know. Sauron is a card that removes all of the card text from ongoing cards, so any ongoing card that has a negative effect is going to have that ability removed, which actually... Uh, there are four cards currently in Marvel Snap that have negative ongoing effects that you would like removed, and we include all four of them here in this deck. We have Ebony Maw, we have Lizard, we have Typhoon Mary, and we have Red Skull. All four of those cards are great to have Sauron, so this deck tries to run only those four ongoing effects. Therefore, Sauron is only going to be an upside for your deck. So you play that out on curve if you can. Uh, let's get into the rest of this deck. So... Your game plan here is generally to play a turn four Shuri, and you want to double one of your big cards, whether that is Typhoid Mary, Arrow, Red Skull, or She-Hulk, and then you Taskmaster that card to get a second one of them. That's your general game plan. Uh, there are a few other game plans here. So since this is a Sauron version of a Shuri list, you do run Ebony Maw which, and Lizard, which are pretty big cards after you Sauron, and you can combo those out with some other cards. So... If you end up sharing turn four, you can double, if you double a Typhoid Mary or a Red Skull or a She-Hulk or anything, and you don't draw Taskmaster, you still can play out some other cards on the final turn to try and win without Taskmaster. A lot of Shuri lists will run things like Arnim Zola to get that second way of playing out cards, but just a lot of people right now are playing Cosmo and Armor to deal with Death Waves, so it's going to be a little bit less effective, so this deck does not run that currently. Uh, you have zero in the deck, which just adds some extra consistency for those negative ongoing cards that in case you don't draw Sauron, you have a way to play that out. You run Scorpion. Uh, this is a flex card for sure. Uh, it's just one of the best two drops in the game. It gives you a lot of extra um, tempo that you wouldn't normally have. Uh, same with Lizard. It's just a, a lot of tempo. Even if you don't Sauron it early enough and you're playing out early, it's fine. Ebony Maw, you're typically not wanting to play out early unless you zero it, uh, especially since <laughs> in this meta, a lot of people are running Killmonger, so this card, better to play it on turn six a lot of times. Uh, and then we run the best card in the game, Arrow. Uh, so if you get down that big card on turn four or five, usually turn five, because um, turn four would be just your Typhoid Mary. But if you get it down on turn five, turn six, you want to Arrow. Uh, you want to have priority going into turn six a lot of times so that you don't get arrowed and you could use your own arrow to pull them off of your lands that you can build up a lot of power early with this deck. So you don't necessarily have to do a turn six Taskmaster because a lot of times you're going to end up getting arrowed on your last turn and you don't want to be arrowed into your big lanes. So ideally you want to build up two lanes big enough that you have priority going into the final turn and then you can generally win with either Taskmaster or arrow or even another play. And then we have Shang. Just for this meta, uh, this meta is pretty dependent on getting priority. So if someone drops down a big card early, you're able to shang it maybe on turn four or five a lot of times. Or you can do a surprise final turn play to shang. Uh, and that generally can end up winning you the game as well. Especially if you have priority going into the final turn. Again, that is important. Uh, so let's get into some games and talk through those. So this is the deck... So this is the starting hand you would kind of want to see. You want to see Sauron. You want to see Scorpion. Um, Ebony Maw is pretty good to have for later on. Um, you don't want to play Ebony Maw out turn one a lot of times because you want to get that Sauron ability on it so you can play it flexibly later. With the turning range, we can give him a rock, potentially. It does not look like it, actually. Only way we're giving him a rock here is if we play out the Ebony Maw, which we're not going to do. Actually, we might do it with zero here. Uh, since Mindscape's coming out and we don't have Shuri in hand, playing 10 more power here is not bad. I doubt he can beat the 10 power. Um, we want to make sure our hand is not too good for him for the final turn. Playing out Sauron. Oh, no. That's actually really bad for us. Uh, the Cosmo negated our zero here. 
So our Ebony Maw is active, which means that we cannot play into that lane. Um, oh no. We are swapping hands, so I think... I don't want to play out Sauron here, because then... If we end up top decking something... Maybe I do want to play out Sauron. It would give him a 10 power Mary if we top deck like Red Skull. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, we're just going to play out... Oh, actually, Typhoon Mary means we give him Shang-Chi. Yeah, okay, I have to play out... Whew. I think I have to just play out Shang. I know it's a little bit weird, but... Uh... Don't really have any other option here. If I want to play out Typhoon Mary this turn. The Mindscape made this game really awkward. I think I'm just going to give him the Typhoid Mary. He played out three cards, giving us two. He gets two as well. Oh, I played the Sauron for the Typhoid Mary. I... So hopefully... We lost. We're still going to just play She-Hulk mid and hope it's enough. We are only losing by two over here. We gave him Typhoid Mary and Taskmaster. His Taskmaster is worth seven. His Typhoid Mary is worth ten. If he did not top deck a card less than three, he can only play one card this turn. So She-Hulk could be a win. He has to have top decked a card two or less energy and he did not but it might be arrow i just type from arrow okay so luckily it was enough <clears throat> it all came down to what he top decked there since we had priority and gave him two high cost cards it was a little bit awkward because we had to get rid of our hand in a weird way we couldn't play the typhoid mary out because we would give him shang chi and he would just be able to shang chi it so we do have a zero which is discount <laughs> sauron um but we have Shuri, so it's a little bit awkward sometimes to play Shuri and Zero. Uh, luckily, we have a Zero Lizard turn potentially we can play out. We want to play Scorpion on turn two almost every time. He played his own Lizard. We Scorpioned his whole hand, so he has four cards that are Scorpioned. I think we can play Zero and Lizard into this lane. And then we can play Shuri <clears throat> into another lane. This could be Galactus with that wave. I don't know why he wouldn't play into the Fist Tower if it was Galactus though. So I think I still just want to play Shuri out here. We don't have priority. So our Shuri gets destroyed if it is Galactus here. Um, but there is a chance that he's playing Leech or Doc Ock. Dr. Doom. So it looks like just a wave Dr. Doom deck. So we could expect Odin or something like that. Um, I'm not sure that this runs Shang-Chi, but it might. Um, I think we can run Red Skull mid... I kind of want to avoid getting arrowed into Fisk's Tower, so that's why I kind of built up this lane over here. So I think I am going to just play it over here. One of the downsides of this is we might get Shang-Chi. That's actually so good for us. I would snap this every time. This just gave us the ability to win both of these lanes. So if he plays... We got to think about Odin, though. So Odin puts 10 power mid. Um, so if we do this... It's 9 power over here, so we end up going to a tiebreaker if he doesn't play over here. It's likely he plays over there, though. We beat Odin every time, though, right? Because he goes to 16, tiebreaker, wins by 8. And we always win this by way more than 8. So I think that this is still the play. Um, this is playing around him playing a big card here. I guess, because if we played it the other way, 
Yeah, is there any downside to just playing these both in the same lane? Because we go to a tiebreaker. If he plays like a small card here and a six plus card here, which is hard for him to do. So I think we're still going to just be safe with this. It's probably Odin. And it's a discounted Odin, so even less power for him. Yeah, here's one of the things is Leech is pretty popular right now. So with Leech being so popular, this deck becomes a lot stronger uh, because they're basically giving us the Sauron ability with, without us playing Sauron. One thing you'll see while I'm playing out this deck is now instead of saying, how do we beat Leader leading up into the final turns, uh, it's how do we beat Arrow. So it's still a lot of the same kind of thought process of we got to fill up a lane um, and then we have to play out somewhere else so that we don't get arrowed into that lane that's already our big lane. Shuri's lab is actually insane with Shuri. Getting that double bonus is kind of crazy. Black Widow Daredevil. A little interesting. Nice, we got Sauron, pretty huge. They're snapping me, which is a little bit spooky. Avengers Compound, Daredevil. He might run ramp right here into Doc Ock Avengers Compound. The Goblin is a little bit strange. So I'm going to play Shuri over on Avengers Compound to give us <clears throat> a little bit of a chance at getting priority. Okay. Looks like some sort of trash list. It does get to see what we're playing here. I do think I want to play out Typhoid Mary. We have priority, so Mary does come down and then he gets Shang in immediately. But we do have arrow for the final turn, so if he doesn't have Shang, we get an arrow mid. So if he doesn't kill our card this turn. But even if he does kill our card this turn, we do have Taskmaster potentially. Alright, Doc Ock could pull Shang. Oh, that was the ideal card. <laughs> so now we go into the final turn with priority. He'll probably leave the game. We had a 1-4 there of getting Shang. So we always play arrow mid here. Uh, it's not enough to win mid unless we drop zero as well. Like if he plays nothing, but obviously he's not going to play nothing. So I think I want to play zero to left. Uh, this will avoid us getting Shang this turn, but I doubt he Shangs this turn because he'd have to play Shang and another small card here to win. Um, I think he's just going to leave. We'll see. Yeah. All right, so one of the combos you can do is play zero Ebony Maw before turn three. You usually will not want to play at turn one. You want to get a little bit more information about what your opponent is playing. Um, we do have Sauron, so I think I'm going to not play Ebony Maw out. With zero early because if he's playing death wave we don't want to get killmongered and waste our ebony maw so one gives us the flexibility to play it out later it does not look like death wave so probably not killmonger plus we have wakanda so we want to probably play sauron to try and fight for a priority when you see Electro, I would have thought maybe <laughs> Galactus, but since he played in some middle lane, it's not Galactus. Um, we didn't draw. Okay, so I think I actually play Zero and Maw here. I'm going to play all these cards here, and then we're going to play Red Skull and then Arrow on the last turn if he doesn't play left here. Actually, we have to worry if he's playing Electro. This might be a, we might be getting leeched here. Okay, well, that was his hub card. It is super unclear what he's playing right now. I'm going to guess Dr. Doom this turn. I want to play around getting arrowed. So I'm going to play this all in the same lane. It also avoids getting Shang-Chi. But I doubt an Electro deck really runs Shang-Chi. They might. But it's more rare since they can only play one card a turn. As expected, Doctor Doom. 
And Odin would put him at 13 on the left. So we can't beat that. We actually probably lose here. <laughs> um, we could tie 13 on the left if we get Typhoid Mary out of Lockjaw. At this point in the game, I could bluff Taskmaster and probably get him to retreat. So I'm going to go ahead and snap. But we actually did not have a way to beat the Odin play. Because we didn't have enough power in our hand. So if he played Odin to the left, he would have 13. He would have 12. And we couldn't get above 13 or 12. Um, but with this play over here, they're going to assume we have Taskmaster in hand. And you can generally bluff them out of the game. <clears throat> so we have Soren in hand. With the hub Viper, <laughs> there is a play for turn 3. To play out um, Ebony Maw. I'm going to play zero turn one so we can play Lizard turn two. That way we're maintaining uh, our priority going into the later turns. This is, Sinister Lawn is actually one of the best locations you can have for this deck. If we're able to get... I don't know what this location is, but we have Sinister Lawn to get into that location if we need. He is potentially getting priority here if it goes to the right. All right, we still maintain... So if we get Ebony Maw here, all right, this makes things a little bit awkward. Them snapping is kind of suspicious. A Mojo play, I think this guy might be running Thanos. No, he's running a trash list, okay. Double trash. So we're just going to play Typhoid Mary here. He might goblin us over here. But I think the Typhoid Mary here is pretty good. Because we get the double Shuri's Lab. So, Because with Sinister London copying over here. If he does like double goblins here. He might goblin himself here. Viper, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> we need to, with the trash list, we need to make sure we're filling up our spots. And now we can play just... Red Skull Taskmaster. He's already filled up the middle. There's not really much he could do. Um, at this point, I can snap pretty easily, and he would probably leave. Um, he's probably already leaving, honestly. Yeah, I don't see how he would stay in this game. So we're just going to not snap him. Wow, a turn. Okay, well. That was a good game. And he leaves. So typically in these games, I'm not going to snap before turn 6, uh, just for the video's sake, not because I would normally do that in a real game. So 0 is not a card I want to play out turn 1 without a Lizard in hand or an Ebony Maw, um, because of the turn 2 Scorpion potential draw. I want to be able to play that out, and then also I can play a turn 3 Sauron. Playing 0 out means I can't have those plays later on. Okay, so again, we don't want to play a zero out because we have the Shuri for turn four, so I want to just skip here. Having Shuri turn four, Red Skull turn five, a lot of times is a snap. So I would probably snap here on turn three, knowing I have those plays. Especially with the armor. He is potentially playing a similar list to us uh, due to... So since this is closing, we have a couple options here. We could try and fill up a lane. We can try and get priority is another thing. So zero means he's probably playing Typhoid Mary mid this turn. So we do, we are able to win mid guaranteed with red skull here there's no card he could play here that can beat the 30 technically only 22 power red skull because we'd be at 25 power he's at 13 meaning that he needs to play a 13 power card on turn five which just does not exist <laughs> okay but that does exist but now he does not have an arrow for the final turn 
and we do. Which means we can arrow plus zero, and there's nothing that he can do about this. Uh, which gives us... I guess the only thing he could do is Arnim Zola. Which I think is unlikely if he's running armor in his deck. He's probably running a very similar list to us. So I think this should win us the game. Even with Arnim Zola, it's not enough. <clears throat> the fact that uh, his arrow got hit, and so did his Zola by the Scorpion, was not enough. I was not expecting the Arnim Zola, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we were able to still pull it out. Um, yeah. We didn't have priority, so we couldn't stop the Arnim Zola, but we could have just played a bigger card. It was very weird of him to play the Arnim Zola, thinking he could win. Um, just because, had we just played um, a big card, we knew that we just had to beat a six power arrow on the right with the zero and the squirrel which is just nine of power. So we didn't know Arnim Zola was going to be negative one is one thing. Arnim Zola would have stayed over here if we didn't play Arrow out. So just being nine power, we could have just played out She-Hulk on the final turn to win if we thought he was running Arnim Zola. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit harder of a play to make because they do run other cards. But since he had played Arrow on the previous turn, he doesn't have a Taskmaster play. Um, Red Skull was an option, uh, which would have given him 11 more power, so it would have beat us if we played She-Hulk, so we had to make that a consideration. Uh, our safest play was just a zero, zero arrow. <clears throat> but yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I'll do some more videos in the future on some more decks. Uh, let me know in the comments what decks you guys want me to review. I can do any deck, whether it's a good deck, meme deck, fun deck. Let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, do you guys like the deck videos more, or do you like me talking about the random things in Snap, or do you like a variety? What do you guys like? Let me know. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.